Hi friends, the among us irrigation methods, we will discuss uh, two important methods, sprinkler and drip irrigation. So sprinkler irrigation method is one of the very popular method wherein water is applied in the form of raindrops. So generally in surface irrigation methods, there are heavy conveyance losses. Just like in case of canal irrigation, there is a loss of water in conveyance is around 30 to 50 percent. Whereas in uh, well irrigation, around 15 to 20 percent is the conveyance losses. Conveyance losses means water loss during the conveyance from the source to the field. That loss is called as conveyance loss. So to avoid this conveyance loss, we can irrigate the plot or field by bringing water in a uh, you know, pipe and, apply, uh, and uh, applying that water in the form of rain wherein uh, we can use only two three components just like main pipeline you can use a filter if water is from the source which is having some suspended particles like organic particles or inorganic particles uh, maybe any filter you can use again after that a razor a razor is to carry the water up to certain level that razor height depends upon the crop height the maximum crop height is taken and that uh, height of the razor is used and then last one is the sprinkler so this is a very simple uh, system wherein we use only two three components this also having uh, a low cost as compared to the drip irrigation uh, we can use this in uh, various conditions like uh, if land is slopey we can use particularly surface irrigations are having limitations in case of um, a slope but sprinkler irrigation can be used in case of slopey lands undulating lands also in case of sandy soils we can't use surface methods of irrigation because advance of water is very slow so in that case, we can use sprinkler irrigation in uh, sandy soils also. Means there are no limitations of slope and texture of the soil in case of sprinkler irrigation. Also, it is having advantages uh, regards to the conveyance losses. It means that we can save water up to 25 to 50 percent. And thereby, we can increase the area under irrigation, maybe by twice. Means suppose current... Uh, use of uh, water is around 80 million hectare in case of India. So we can e increase that area by at least by 150 or 140 million hectare if we switch on to the this micro sprinkler irrigation methods or pressurized irrigation methods. But there are certain limitations also in case of sprinkler irrigation. It requires a heavy requirement of pressure around it requires up to 10 kg Per centimeter square of pressure to operate the system. Also, in case of wind, if wind velocity is more, we can't use it. Also, in case of uh, uh, you can say, particularly due to the evaporation losses, or there are certain we can say, in case of uh, uh, crop is having very uh, uh, great height like sugarcane or like jar, we can't use this uh, properly. But we, with certain limitations, we can adapt it for the crops like groundnut, soybean, particularly for potato irrigation also, it is very easy because it, it is portable, we can move from one place to another. So in such case, the sprinkler irrigation covers uh, and its uh, area is increasing, its popularity is increasing. Next one is pressurized irrigation methods. So what are pressurized irrigation methods? So for this understanding this pressurized irrigation system, we have to understand four or five points. Pressurized irrigation systems are those systems which uh, are having precise and slow application of water, precise and slow application of water for a long period of time with a discrete or continuous or tiny streams in the and applied in the root zone also important is with low pressure delivery system so these four point points are very important to increase the efficiency of the irrigation system precise means 
to apply water what is necessary we are not applying more we are not applying less we are applying water according to the need of the crop that is called as precise the required amount of water is applied means we can decide what amount of water to be delivered at the point of application at the point of delivery system slow means we are applying the water in such a way that the speed or the advance of water or the application of water is such that it is less than the infiltration rate of the soil in case of sprinkler also we have to see that the sprinkler also is not having the more infiltration rate than the soil so that there is no loss of water through the runoff in the drip again that loss is again minimum also in case of uh, tiny streams are also that the purpose is discrete or continuous means we are reducing the speed of the water and we are applying water with a, a small amount as possible as we can and we are applying water to the root zone we are not applying water unnecessarily other areas and thereby saving the water and by also we are increasing the uh, water efficiency by minimizing the loss of water and low pressure delivery system means we can minimize the requirement of energy to run the pump so this is all about pressure irrigation systems in which we can cover micro sprinklers bubbler irrigation and drip irrigation now here we will discuss drip irrigation in case of this methods drip irrigation is also very popular one particularly for tree crops nowadays it is also used for wide spacer crops like cotton sugarcane or ginger turmeric and also now it is recommended to various other crops over with a wide range of uh, crops now it is covering because it is having so much advantages so first we will discuss what is it in the what uh, system it has so it has pump it has fertilizer tank it has filters it has walls it has main and sub mains in case of pump pump is having around the capacity around 0.15 to 0.2 kg per centimeter square minimum also we can increase the capacity up to 1 to 1.75 kg per centimeter square means it is having a very low requirement of the energy uh, next one is wall it is check wall means that will allow the flow towards the uh, this system but it will not allow the back flow so that whatever the fertilizers or suspended particles are not again uh, came back to the pump and that will uh, avoid the clogging of the or the uh, mixture of the uh, material with the water then one of the important is tank fertilizer tank or herbigation tank means we can add these fertilizers herbicides to apply to the uh, crop uh, so depending upon the requirement we can use this uh, next one is pressure gauge it decides it maintains the proper because to have a proper pressure uniformity over the uh, application area is very important and for that we should know the pressure gauge here and pressure gauge here pressure gauge here if there is no drop or much a larger drop it means that our system is working efficiently and we can uh, minimize the uh, which can say uh, differences in the uniformity of application of water uh, in case of filter there are two types of filters one is screen filter and another one is sand filter screen filter is a normal screen filter with mesh 100 to 200 mesh which is having uh, which can reduce this uh, suspended particles of uh, small size up to 20 micron to 100 micron meter and whereas sand filter is very efficient than screen filter because screen filter gets clogged very easily so we have to uh, back flush it uh, for a certain period and we have to remove the clogging of the screens but in case of sand filter it is very efficient where it can remove the suspended particles of around 100 to 150 micrometer and it can easily uh, work for a longer period by maintaining those its maintenance is less than the screen filter Whereas in case of uh, the smaller size, we can remove by screen, but definitely these both need to be cleared. You know, 15 days or 30 days we have to back flush, that care should be taken. Uh, next one is walls. Again, these are walls, are several walls you can use to control or to uh, suppose we want to irrigate only this part, then we can close this wall. If you want to irrigate this part we can close this wall so that is the use of this wall 
Then uh, this is main pipeline which is having around size of 25 to 75 mm. The material is PVC, uh, normal PVC material we can use. So then uh, sub mains are there which are having size of 25 to 50 mm and then laterals. Lateral material is different than the mains and sub mains. Uh, the material of lateral is low density polyethylene or linear low density polythene. So that material is necessary to have the proper uh, use and also we can bend it properly. End caps are required to these uh, sub mains and so end caps when we want to flush this we can remove this end cap water will move out so whatever the precipitates that can be moved out in case of uh, laterals there are different types of laterals we can use uh, the particularly inline laterals means uh, drippers are within the lateral and where also now because those are more popular than the normal uh, laterals which are having the drippers outside the lateral so in case of in uh, uh, I mean, inline drippers uh, are very popular nowadays because its maintenance cost is less as compared to the outline drippers. So, in case of maintenance of drip system, there are certain conditions required. Like we know that this is having a slow flow of water. So, what happens? What if the clay particles are there? What if suspended particles are there? They get settled down, and and that increases the precipitation of the different materials in the pipes and that will gradually minimizes the flow of water so to avoid this one also we use fertilizers herbicides so what happens that also having precipitates and also they have the clogging of the drippers means we have to take care that whatever the material is there we, we should maintain this drip system free from this precipitates clogging of drippers and also development of certain organisms like algae which uh, develop on the organic material so chlorine is used bleaching powder normally is used uh, to re reduce the algae also sodium hypochlorite is used to avoid the clogging of drippers uh, whereas technical hydrochloric acid is used uh, 0.5 to 2 percent to reduce the precipitation of, of the different materials in the lines pipelines and uh, around 0.5 to 2 percent is recommended so this care if we take properly and regular maintenance of the sand and screen filter uh, we can have uh, minimum maintenance of the drip system so it is having several advantages as we, as we have seen already in in case of sprinkler also means we are applying water precisely slowly discreetly at the root zone means we are reducing the loss of water conveyance particularly around 50 to uh, 50 percent definitely also we are applying water as per the requirement means we are maintaining the soil and the field capacity means uh, we are not either applying more or either applying low so that it is having better growth of the crop so if this happens it is increasing water efficiency yield of the crop and reducing the use of water ultimately quality of the crop quality of the produce is more than the normal irrigation methods so in overall a drip irrigation system is having more advantages over the others and we can increase the area definitely as compared to other irrigation methods so here 60 to 70 percent of saving of water we can achieve it is a huge saving of water and also increase of produce is also very important so in overall we can increase the area of irrigation by increasing the water efficiency and also the quality produce also is very important but there are uh, few disadvantages that is initial cost is high or it requires maintenance particularly laterals gets damaged uh, during every year so that are few disadvantages but we can reduce it because considering the uh, importance of water nowadays we have to switch on to these pressurized irrigation methods to increase the water efficiency and also to increase the yield of the crop so these are the very important methods nowadays and we're going to be popular and that there will be no alternative to to these pressurized irrigation systems thank you